Good afternoon and welcome to this session of the Queen's Roundtable. I'm Evangelist Prophetess Valerie Ammons and I am so glad that you've chosen to break bread with me today. So without any further ado, we're going to go to the throne. Almighty God, in your precious Son, Jesus' name, if and when I said something that I didn't glorify you, that I misrepresented you, God, I repent right now. Holy Ghost, you are welcome. You are welcome here. You are welcome to my mind, my soul, and my spirit, and my body. Body. I surrender it. God, let your words come out of my mouth. Satan, I arrest you right now in the name of Jesus. I serve you notice that you have no place here. God, I lift you up because you say if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. I praise and thank you for this opportunity. I praise and thank you for UPTV. And I praise and thank you for the increase that you're giving the Queen's Roundtable. And I lift up all the queens all over the world in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, welcome to the Queen's Roundtable. I have some extraordinary, I have an extraordinary topic this, this afternoon. And the topic is extraordinary. And I was sitting uh, asking God, what would you have for me to talk about today to empower the Queens with? And he said the word extraordinary. So I began to look up extraordinary, and this is the definition beyond what is usual. And in 2 Corinthians, it reads, but we have the treasures in clay jars so that the extraordinary power comes from God, not from us. And in Luke 10 and 19, it reads, God has given us power over the enemy. God has empowered us by his DNA to be extraordinary, to be beyond what is usual. And I look around all the time, Queens, and I see extraordinary beings. On Facebook, I see extraordinary Queens, uh, Queens that are, that are um, airplane pilots, um, they're uh, CEOs. We're doing extraordinary things. And that's why it bothers me when I see us not doing extraordinary things. We are always to be beyond the usual because God has made us that way. We are extraordinarily made. We are wondrously made. We carry life in our bodies and then we are able, life is able to come out of our bodies. And there's a bond between us and that person that comes out of our bodies that is extraordinary. It is beyond the usual. And I am so grateful to God with how he made us. Not only are we able to carry another human being in our extraordinary bodies, but then we're able to feed them with our extraordinary bodies again. So God has holistically prepared us and made us in his DNA that we are able to uh, sustain life in our bodies, bring forth life out of our bodies, and feed life from our bodies. And that's extraordinary to me. And I've been looking for extraordinary women. And I was going to go back, you know, and look at Harriet Tubman and, 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 Rosa Parks, and we all know that these ladies were extraordinary because of their situation, the situation that they were in was extraordinary. And it took extraordinary measures to bring them out. And what's so extraordinary about it, Queens, is that when they came out, they didn't come out alone. They came out bringing more extraordinary queens, creating, empowering, embracing extraordinary queens. And we have ran um, countries, um, look at uh, Cleopatra. Cleopatra, she, she ran Egypt. She was the queen of Egypt. And we look at these women and we act like they didn't go through anything. They did. And just like us today, we go through things, but we have been given the means, the extraordinary means to win. We are greater than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. And if we stay with God, as it is in Matthew 6 and 33, if we first seek God and his way of doing things, that all things will be added unto us. See, we need to get that into our spirits. 
And then we need to allow the spirit to lead us. And then it will lead us into extraordinary things. There was a young lady that I, I, I know that I worked with. Um, uh, she, was, she is a CNA, an extraordinary woman. But I didn't know until just the other day how extraordinary she was. She put a post up on Facebook and a lot of people would not dare put this post up because they would be they would be embarrassed but when I asked her if I could use the post she said yes you can because it was I put it out there she put a piece of herself out there to again empower to to embrace to in to um, a deposit a little bit of her power and her extraordinary and her extraordinary um, means, her extraordinary possession that God has given her, her purpose, her extraordinary purpose that God gave her that she could conquer and she shared it with us. And her name is Sasha Dye and I worked with her and um, her work was always extraordinary. She stayed to the point she was very compassionate for the people that she cared for. Her work was done, and she, and, and she was going to do it in an exemplary measure. She was not going to leave out anything. She wasn't going to take a shortcut. If she had to comb hair, she was going to do that. And if she had to bring something to make her, her residence look extraordinary, she did. And so this is, this is how she, what she shared, and, and I really have to share that with you share this with you. Had my first child at 12. Five years later, married. Then came my second. Thirteen months later came my third. For the last 12 years, actually 21 years, I've been a single parent and none of them stopped my movements. They only enhanced the way I moved. So fast forward in 2013, once again, I had another baby who happens to be 16 months old, and the single parent cycle begins again. Even still, doesn't stop my movements. So to the mothers holding it down, continue striving. Yes, it's frustrating at times. Yes, it just, it's just you trying to balance it all. And yes, it gets downright scandalous, but I am here to tell you, it'll be worth it in the long run. Keep the faith. God hears, sees, and feels every tear we shed. He replaces those tears with joy. What an amazing testimony to show how this woman, starting her, her, her motherhood at 12, and how she has embraced it, how she has empowered herself. And, and, you know, a long time ago they would say, you make a mistake. We made a mistake. And, and you know, at 12 years old, she had to be an extraordinary child to, to undertake such an extraordinary responsibility. We are just wondrously made. And if we stay with God, we can all do what this woman does. She owns her own car. She, uh, you know, she's able to do all these extraordinary things because she has given her life to God. And I'm not saying that all the time that we stay on the path. And believe me, I'm not trying to say that I stay on the path all the time because situations arise and my flesh jumps before my spirit. So I'm not trying to say that we don't make mistakes because we do. And in this life, there are some hurdles that we come over and there's some hurdles that are easy for us to jump over. But there are some hurdles that we have to climb and every step that we take should be climbing. We should be climbing those steps with God because in, in us, we will succeed if we stay with him. We should never be a part of the statistics. We should always be an exception to the rule. Because of our extraordinary DNA, 
that has been deposited in us, that we are made in God's image and likeness, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I had a child when I was 15, and it was a hurdle because I was still being a teenager. And my mom was really raising this child. So in other words, I had a child for my mom. And she never, never said a, a, a word about her raising this child. She took that responsibility and she took it on her shoulders, her and my dad, and they raised this child. And I can't say that uh, I, I, I gave 80%. And, and they gave 20, actually it was the opposite. They might have given 95 and I gave five because it was hard to, to look at my son as, as my son when actually it was more like my brother. But my mother taught me that this is your child and one day you're going to have to be that mother to him. And one day you're going to have to step out and say, I made a mistake, but I'm still your mother. I'm this extraordinary woman that God is going to bring to her purpose. My son is the principal of Robeson High School right now. He's an extraordinary man. And I praise and thank God for him allowing me to help raise him into that extraordinary person that he is today. You know, God is always with us, and sometimes we make decisions that d God had did not would not have wanted us to make, but he stays there even with the decisions that we make. He's still there because we have free will. We have that extraordinary thing, free will. It's extraordinary that I am able to do as I please, and God is still there. He is still waiting for me to get to come out of that stinking thinking to get back into that extraordinary place that he has placed us. And I praise and thank God for the guidance of extraordinary women in my life, extraordinary women that was placed in my life for my journey so that my journey would lead to success and my journey would lead to the purpose and the destiny that God has set just for me. Because we all have a purpose, queens, that is just for us. And it bothers me when I see us being a part of the statistics, saying, oh, she's going to have five babies and she's not going to do anything. Don't let that be a part of your persona. Don't let people speak that negative thing into your life. Remember that I'm extraordinarily made. Remember that my DNA is extraordinary. So therefore, I am an extraordinary being. Who, who can do these things? This is what an extraordinary queen has been empowered by God to do. We go beyond what is the usual. Who else can cook, clean, wash, give out instructions, quiet her baby's cry? And I might add, the baby is on her hip and, and, and another one in her womb. And then we collaborate on the phone with our husbands on vacation plans and we collaborate <clears throat> all through the day with our jobs, creating an atmosphere of empowerment. This is what we do. We are, you talk about multitasking. Oh my God, we got multitasking to our multitasking. And I am telling you, I have watched, I have watched my mother make a meal with absolutely a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I watched my grandmother work as a seamstress, which God had gave her an extraordinary gift where she could sew without a pattern. She could cut out uh, whatever you wanted from a piece of material just by looking at it. That was an extraordinary gift. And God has extraordinary gifts for all of us, for all of us, the kings and the queens. But queens, we do so much more so much more and now we're even we're even um, 
the breadwinners. And a lot of us are a single parent, as is my sister Sasha Dye. And not my hat's off to her. I applaud her uh, with an exceptional applause. Uh, applause. I applaud her with, with uh, how she's empowered other people. And I am grateful to her for sharing. See, that's what we do, queens. When we share our experiences, we empower and we teach how to be extraordinary women. And from that alone, I just applaud her for sharing. Thank you so much, Sister Di. And it, it bothers me when I see us not being extraordinary creatures, extraordinary species, extraordinary women. It bothers me when I see us not acting in the manner in which we were made. You know, look at your clothes before you leave. Are you showing too much? You should always leave something for the imagination, queens. That's what my husband says. He says, always leave something for the imagination. And we're showing all. And, you know, if, if a man, if God has sent the, sent the man for us, he is finding us, he is looking for us. I say this all the time. He's not going to pay attention to us if we're not looking appropriate, if we have on our pajamas, if we have not combed our hair and washed our face, and if we're snatching our, our kids, calling them out of their names, we're not being extraordinary then. We're being a statistics. This is how they labeled us, that we will never be anything. We're ignorant and nappy-headed, and all we can do is have babies and stay on and, 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 and be supported by the system. We don't want to be supported by the system. If there comes a time where you need the system, you will use the system just to get you to the place that you need to be. Get use the system. I've used the system and went to school, became a nurse, and then I quit. I quit using the system because God has get, had given me an extraordinary gift to be able to nurture and care for others. So I didn't need to use the system. I left that for someone else to use the system to get to where they need to be to get educated. See, when you don't educate your mind, you keep yourself in a position of poverty. You know, and, and you keep yourself not being in the position to, to advance. We always want to be moving. My favorite song is moving forward. We always have to be moving forward to our destiny. On our journey, is there going to be some pitfalls? Is there going to be some ditches? Yes, they are. But if you stay with God when you come to the ditch or when you come to the pitfall, you are able to say, oh, my God, I see the trap that Satan is trying to set for me because I have this extraordinary gift to walk with God and to know that God loves me unconditionally and he will not have me fall into that ditch. See, some lessons that we learn, we learn because of our inability to stay and to stand and to walk out on faith. When we start staying and standing and walking out on faith, those ditches become less on our journey because we see them. We see the, what uh, Satan is setting up for our fall, and we're able to detour around them. But we have to stay with God, queens. No matter what the situation, no matter what the negative decision that we made in the past, we can make positive decisions in the future by being a positive role model. See, stop looking at the negative. Stop looking for the negative. Look for the positive. If you don't find it, try creating the positive. And if, there's, if that's just not going to be, then evaluate the relationship, that's with a man or, 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 or a woman. Evaluate the relationship and then 
ask God to lead you out of that out of that place of negativity and take you to that place of positivity where I can look at myself in the mirror and be proud of who I am and what I am uh, empowering into the community, what I'm empowering into the world. Start speaking those things into existence. I will be. I am going to be. I am a child of the King who God has just given me, has blessed me daily with his benefits, the benefits to be healed, the benefits to prosper, the benefits to be an exception to the rule. So these are the things that we need to do when it comes to being beyond the usual, that's us. That's us, queens. We are beyond the usual. We are beyond the exception to the rule. We are beyond the little bit that uh, somebody might want to give us. We should never, ever, ever settle for a little bit because of our extraordinaire. We should always be looking for the extraordinary. We should always be striving to get to that point and then to embrace that empowerment that God has given us by making us extraordinary, then to be able to pass it out, be able to share, to be able to, to walk into that power that God has for us that we can create in this world a better place, starting with our home, starting with our family, starting with our community. We, be, we should be embracing each other. I don't care what color you are. Embrace your sister. Embrace her because she has something that could enhance your life. Empower into all of the queens because they're in, we are mixing soul because we want to, God wants a race of people that is going to obey and he, uh, he is me twining us together. So, you know, there won't be that race of people that was ignorant and full of hatred. There will be a race of people that is full of law and lo love, joy, and happiness, peace and trustworthy and kindness to your brother man. You know, God says to love your neighbor like you love yourself, to love them like he loves us. See, when we get that in our spirit and we allow the spirit man to lead our soul, then we're able to walk into that love and have that peace that passes all understanding because we need to know who we are, whose we are, and who made us to be this extraordinary creature that we are. We need to embrace always empowering always lifting up, never putting down or never putting down without a solution. A good friend of mine told me, never criticize unless you have a solution. So you should always be, be criticizing people in a way that you are going to, to let them know that I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying this negative thing, but I'm offering you a way to make this negative thing a positive thing. Get the wisdom from the older women. Sit at their feet and listen to them. One thing my grandmother told me is that don't start anything you can't finish because you can't quit in the middle of the stream. And I never got that until a little, maybe three or four years ago. I got it. What she's saying is, if you allow someone to mistreat you, they're going to always feel like that's what they can do. And then when you realize that that's not what you want, that's not empowering you, then it's going to be hard for you to bring those people into your newness, into your extraordinaire, into your extraordinary abilities to be that extraordinary woman. And, and so then you have, a, you have um, a situation where you're trying to get them to see I no longer and that woman that was a statistics. I have now stepped into my extraordinary purpose and I will not allow you to mistreat me or misuse me or abuse me. I am empowering myself through the word of God who said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am wondrously made in his image and likeness and I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I cannot leave this show today without applauding this woman that I knew 
um, years and years ago. And this woman was so extraordinarily blessed. She had wisdom. She, um, she was wondrously made. And uh, she took me under her wing. And I can't say that at first it was willingly, but she took me under her wing and she taught me and, and, and she taught me how to be, how to, how to start walking in that extraordinary purpose that God had for me. She took an extraordinary situation and she excelled in it. And by her excelling in it, she allowed, she poured out into me. And I'm able now to pour out into you and have that extraordinary experience for you to see waiting on you. And I applaud her today. Actually, I have so much respect for this lady. And she is just that, a lady of, of, of wisdom and intelligence. And, and she carries herself in, in, in a way where she will always demand respect. And I praise and thank God for her overlooking the extraordinary situation and looking beyond and saw that here is a person that I can embrace and I can empower and I can pour out into her what God has poured out into me. And I thank you so very much, Mrs. Williams. And to all the queens that are out there today who are listening, who are looking for a way out, Start asking your question, ask these questions. What do I want? How do I get it? How, who will give it to me? What avenues do I take? God, please show me the way. And when you get tired of being tired and you ask God to show you a way and you sit at a foot at the feet of an extraordinary person, an extraordinary queen, and allow your hearts to be open and your minds to be open to what they have to empower you with. And, and, and then you'll be that exceptional, that extraordinary role model for your children, for your family, for your community, and for this world. This is our purpose, is to teach, is to empower others, to be a empowerments for others. It's like a domino effect. This is what we should be doing, queens. We should be teaching. We should be, ex be an example. We should be a role model for all of the queens that are coming up, for our nieces, for our cousins, for our sisters, for our aunts and our mothers. Even, even God uses little children to bring their mothers in and embrace that. Embrace that queen and look in the mirror and say, I am a child of the king. I am beautifully, wondrously, and extraordinarily made in the image and likeness of God, and I shall do extraordinary things. And peace be unto you.